Hi everybody, this is Lindsay from Winding Road Crochet and I'm excited to be showing you how to make my woven cowl. I wanted to make this a video tutorial because this has been a very popular pattern and I wanted to make sure everyone was able to create it. It is a very easy pattern using basic stitch techniques, just a little outside of the box thinking on the construction part. So I hope you enjoy it. So if you like this pattern and you like this video, please make sure you subscribe and hit the like button below that tells me you want me to make more video patterns and I will do so. So to make this pattern, you're gonna need just a few items. You're gonna need a skein of Lion Brand Thick and Quick. It does only use one skein, but it's really tight, so be careful. Um, you're also gonna need a nine millimeter crochet hook as well as some scissors and a yarn needle. So to save on time, I am gonna be showing you how to do the child size of this cowl, but to get the pattern for the adult size, just check the description box below for a link to the pattern. So let's go ahead and get started. Today I'm gonna to be using the Wool Ease Thick and Quick by Lion Brand. You do not have to use this yarn. You could use any bulky size yarn. It will work just fine. Now, if you have an allergy to wool or a sensitivity to wool, another option is to use the Lion Brand Heartland Thick and Quick. This is a 100% acrylic yarn. So that is a good option if you are allergic to wool. So I'm actually calling this video more of a guide over a tutorial just because I am going to be showing you the first three rows because rows two through seven or ten are actually just a one row repeat and then I'll show you how to finish up with the weaving and everything like that. So we'll go ahead and start with making a slip knot. Now you do not want to leave a huge tail if you're doing the adult size because this project is a one skein project but if you leave a huge tail you risk making it a two skein project it would really be terrible to need that second skein for just a few yards of yarn so we'll go ahead and make our slip knot and for the child size we're going to go ahead and chain 40 and honestly I could have left even a smaller tail here I just need enough of a tail to attach this the center of the scarf later. So we're gonna go ahead and chain up 40 for the child size. And I'll try to do this as fast as I can. I believe for the adult size, you'll be chaining 60. All right, 39 and 40. So now we have 40 chains. We're going to head and half double crochet. Oops, get my yarn back over here. I can't make up my mind which side do I my yarn on. Okay, now that we got that figured out, we are going to go ahead and half double crochet into the third chain from the hook. So it's right here, one, two, three. And we're gonna go ahead and half double crochet into that chain and into every chain down this chain. Put one stitch into every chain down this chain. Um, we right now are creating the first, I'm actually gonna use the word finger. Someone used finger earlier on my, on a comment, but we're gonna create the first finger on the side of our of our scarf and then we're also going to create the center of the scarf and that's basically what you're going to do every row every row you're going to create a finger on one side and then you're going to work the center of the scarf so we'll go ahead and work all the way down this row and i will speed this up a little bit and get back to you whenever um, i'm done with this row all right, here we go. We are starting on row two. And what makes this pattern just a little bit different is we're gonna start by chaining 10. We are actually extending this row to make another finger, for no better word out there, at the end of this row. We're actually gonna make kind of a 
funky looking scarf. It's gonna look weird at first, but we're going to chain 10, then turn our work, and again, working into the third chain from the hook, right here. We're gonna work into that and work seven half double crochet. So seven to half double crochet into the into the chain before we start working into the actual body of the scarf itself. All right, just a few more. And then we'll go ahead and start working into the body. Very last one here. Which you hate when your hook won't go in. All right, now that we're working into the body, we wanna create this really pretty kind of rib look in the body of the scarf. So to do that, we are gonna be working into the back loop. So normally when you crochet, you would grow crochet under both of these top loops, but in order to crochet into the back loop only, we're just gonna go through the center of the stitch and under that back loop. So we'll be working a half double crochet into each of the back loops for 30 stitches. Now keep in mind, the base of this was actually 37 stitches long. So you're only gonna work into the first 30 stitches and the stitch count will of course be different for the adult size. So I'm going to go ahead and work 30 stitches down, down the body of the scarf and I will get back to you when I get to the end of those 30 stitches, but you are not working the entire scarf. All right, so we're working stitch number 29 and we're working stitch 30. So now we're at the end of row two and we are simply going to be repeating this. As you can see, I got two fingers on both sides. We are going to go ahead and repeat this for row three through either row seven or row 10 if you're doing the adult scarf. So once again, we're going to chain 10 chain 10 at the beginning of this row that will extend it, creating that kind of yarny finger at the end. We'll turn it. And then we're gonna work into the third chain from the hook. So there'll be seven half double crochets into the chain. And then we'll do another 30 into the back loops of the actual scarf. And it does get easier because you can see where the end of each finger is, so it makes it a little easier going back and forth, seeing where you need to stop in each row. But it's just that first row, knowing exactly where to stop so that you don't lose that finger, that first finger or tail, whatever you'd like to call the end. It's, it's a very unusual way of, um, of creating something but it does work. It, it does create uh, these tails that will eventually weave in together. So now we have two tails. On the child size, you're gonna end up having three tails on one side and four tails on the other. On, on the adult scarf, I do believe you have five tails on both sides. So now I'm working into the back loops only since I'm working into the body of the scarf. Again, that gives you a really nice kind of ribbed texture in the center to make it look more interesting. And that's how you do this one row repeat. You'll just keep repeating this until you have the number of rows you're looking for creating those tails. I'm gonna get the rest of the scarf done. I'm actually going to make it a two-tone scarf so it makes it easier to see the weaving in. Um, to do that, I would have had to, of course, start doing the two-tone in the first row. Um, what I would have done is instead of chaining, instead of working all of the 37 stitches, I would have only worked half of the body of the scarf in one color, changed color, and then worked the other half in another color. So for example, child size, I would only worked 15 stitches of the body in one color and the other. So you'll see that two-toned as I 
finish up with this scarf. All right, so here I have my two-tone scarf to make it easier to see when I when I change over my colors. And so when we weave this in, it'll be a little bit easier to see. You can see how we've created a really nice ribbing from working in the back loops only. This is just a fun way to do this scarf. Um, it'd be real pretty with a lot of different color combinations. Now, I am not fastening off my yarn here. I am going to leave my hook where it is and then I'm going to turn my yarn over so that my starting tail is on the right upper corner. I'm going to need that in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and take this tail. We're going to use it in just a second. I'm going to fold the section down, leaving my hook in place. If you need to make a pull the loop, pull the hook out to make it easier, that's definitely an option, but we are going to leave it in place. Using this tail, we're going to fold over the other side and I'm actually going to take my hook, use it as a tool, that's what it's for, and I'm going to find a stitch right at the top or bottom of one of the stitches at the end of the tail and pull that through and I'm actually going to knot that and weave it in in just a little bit, but for now it's just going to hold that in place. So this might be a little messy because some of these things we're going to weave together and then it's going to unweave a little bit, but we're going to slowly work with this to get these woven together. So starting with your lighter color or whichever one you want to start with, we are going to weave in and out through the other tails of the other side. So we're going to start by going over first, over one on the other side, use the light one is going to go under one of the dark ones and then back over one of the, go back over the dark one. So. Then moving on to the next one, we're going to go under first. So take the light one under the dark, take the light purple and go over a dark purple, and then take the light one and go under a dark purple. And go ahead and stretch these out, pull these tight to kind of help them stay in place. They will unravel and we will reweave them together and just to make this work really well. And then we're gonna continue doing this with the other two, so under, or sorry, over, under, over again. Still trying to work those in. These are shorter ones, so that it makes it a little bit harder with the adult one, just a smidge easier with the longer tails. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stretch these out just a little bit. I did, when I shaped these, I took in consideration how thick the scarf was compared to how wide the tails are. So. I really wouldn't be adjusting this pattern too much because that was taking consideration when it was designed. Now using your hook, you're gonna go back into your loop and now we are going to single crochet, two single crochet into the end of each tail. So right now I'm only gonna be working with the light purple. I'm putting one single crochet into the tail going around that turning chain. And then now I'm grabbing the second light purple tail and I'm going to work two single crochet into this tail as well going around that turning chain. One, two, and then again we're grabbing the purple, the lighter purple color. And we're going to do two more single crochet. Alright, and that gets us to the point. Actually, nope. I'm lied. There's one more. Lindsay can't count. It's okay. We get through it. Um, go ahead and make two single crochet into this one as well. All right. There we go. All right. Now we got the first side done. And yes, that last one came undone. It's not a big deal. We'll weave it all in when we go up the second side. So go ahead and get these back in place. How dare they move? Yeah, you know how it is. Yarn has a mind of its own. Now we're gonna go start working up the next side, but before we do, we're just gonna chain one to help us get a, a little bit more of a point. You could chain two if you'd like. It's a little bit optional, but right now I'm just chaining one. Now I'm working into the dark purple. 
and I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm doing two single crochet into the end of each of the dark purple. Just make sure that everything is woven correctly. If you're going over one, then you want to go under. It's really easy. Um, just the way you typically do a basket weave or top of a pie or whatever suits your fancy, whatever you've woven before. So we're going into the last one because this side does only have three two single crochet and then to finish it off we're just going to find a stitch that we think is about in the right position and we're going to slip stitch to that stitch and then you will yarn over once more and we're going to clip the thread and pull that through so that just leaves us with two thread ends to weave in and now we're just going to finish up with our fringe so to make the fringe you're just going to take a piece I do have the exact measurements on the blog post it's important to follow the measurements for the adult size because again it's going to be really really tight to keep it under one skein so for here I'm not going to measure as clearly but I'm going to take one length about this size I'm going to be working into the single crochets. I'm only going to put one strand of yarn into each single crochet. So you're going to take your yarn and you're going to fold it in half. Push your hook through one of the single crochet stitches. Pull that loop over your hook. Pull that through. Now I did go in from the back side of the work to the front. Pull that loop through to the back. Put both threads over my hook and then pull that tight so that will create your fringe and then I didn't do it too neatly I could have made the pieces exactly the same size but I'll just trim it up it's not really a huge deal um, but you will put one thread into each single crochet and then one thread into that chain in the center and that's it that's all you have to do once you have all your fringe in and your ends woven in your scarf is done and you can enjoy it all right so we are all done and i am so appreciative that you watched this video all the way through if you like the woven cow and you want to check out more of my patterns there is a link in the description box below if you enjoyed the video i would really appreciate it if you subscribed and hit the like button that tells me you want me to make more videos um, also you can follow me on any of my social media instagram twitter pinterest facebook i'm everywhere so those links will also be in the comments below. Thank you so much.